fire is a terrible thing. Fire destroys people's houses and their furniture and clothes. And sometimes the people themselves are burned and even killed. Many more homes would be burned and many more people would be hurt and killed if our city firefighters were not always on the job. Some people seem to think that a fire is fun. The fire know that it is not fun. So does Mrs. Howard. You see, it's her house that is burning. She's worried about her little girl, Betty. Betty was asleep when the fireman told Mrs. Howard to come out of the house. But here is Betty, saved by a brave fireman who carried her out of the burning house. The fireman assures her mother that Betty is just frightened and not really hurt. Betty's father, of course, is also glad to see that she is safe. Betty's parents thank the fireman for saving her life, but he has to leave them and join the other firefighters in putting out the fire before it can do any more damage. The next morning, Betty and her parents find that the house did not burn down after all. They are grateful to all the firemen who worked so hard to save it. This house is just a few blocks away from the Howards. Can you guess whose it is? Let's go in and find out. Here's one member of the family, Michael Ryan. We'll call him Mike. He seems to be waiting for something. And here is Mike's father. He is the brave fireman who saved Betty's life. Now he doesn't look much like a fireman, does he? That's because at home, firemen dress and live just like everybody else. The bandage on his arm, that's where he was burned last night when he had to go through the fire to get Betty out of her bed. This is a very special Saturday morning for Mike because this Saturday morning, he's going to see the fire station where his father works and all of us are going with them. On the way, they stop at a fire alarm box like the one Mr. Howard used when his house was on fire. Everyone should know where to find the fire alarm box nearest his house. To send an alarm, you break the glass and do what it says on the box. Then wait right there until the fireman comes so you can tell them which house is on fire. Of course, Mr. Ryan doesn't really send an alarm because the fireman would come rushing out here and there might not be anybody at the station to answer a real alarm. And in the meantime, somebody's house might burn down. That's why we never turn in a false alarm. Here is the fire station where Mr. Ryan works. Mike is going to see what the firemen do while they're at work, how they know when there's a fire, and how they put it out. The firemen have just returned from a fire, and they're now ready to put their big red trucks back into the building. This is the biggest truck of all, the hook and ladder truck. It's so long that it takes two men to steer it, one in front, and one at the back end. The ladders are used by firemen for climbing up into burning buildings to fight fires from inside and to bring down people who have been trapped upstairs. The chemical fire extinguishers on the truck are used for putting out small fires. Now the firemen will get the truck ready for another fire. For big fires, firemen use the big hoses which are connected to fire hydrants and used to drown the fire with water. This engine truck pumps water through the hoses. Some engines pump 1,500 gallons of water a minute. That's as much water as Mike drinks in two years. Here is where the firemen connect the hose to the engine to a flow of water. Mr. Ryan's boss is the fire chief. He has had many years of experience and he knows all about fighting fires. He goes to every fire. Upstairs, a fireman is holding a dummy. These men are carrying a net into which people may jump from burning buildings. To be sure it is strong enough, it is tested with the dummy, which weighs as much as a man. Have you noticed how all the firemen greet Mike and his father? Firemen get to be very good friends when they work together and help each other in the dangerous work of fighting fires. Inside the station house is an alarm board where there is a man on duty day and night. An alarm is sent out from the central fire station whenever there is a fire anywhere in the city. 
This board lists all the fire alarm boxes in the city. This machine punches holes in a paper tape whenever the gong rings. There's an alarm now. The number of rings tells from which box the alarm was sent. Mike is excited. The watchman examines the tape to see whether the call is for this station. No, the number of punches tells that the alarm is for another station. So the watchman simply records it in his book. When the alarm is for this station, he sounds a big gong and turns on bright lights upstairs. Upstairs is the room where Mike's dad and the other firemen sleep when they're on night duty. All but the watchman at the alarm board, who must stay wide awake all night. Do you know what happens when they are called to a fire? Mike has the right idea, but it's not safe for anybody to slide down the pole until he has been taught how. So Mr. Ryan asks one of his fireman friends to show Mike what the firemen do when they have to answer an alarm at night. His friend agrees to do it. Firemen always sleep in their underwear and shirts. They keep their trousers tucked into their boots beside the bed. Then, when an alarm sounds, Downstairs, the firemen put on their coats and helmets and hop onto the trucks. They are on their way to the fire a minute after the alarm sounds. Mike's father tells him that the man who slid down the pole has just graduated from fireman's school. Oh yes, firemen go to school too. It's different from other schools, but firemen have to learn many things before they can join regular fire companies such as this. As Mike and his father come out of the firehouse, they meet the fire inspector. His job is just as important as the fireman's. He goes around the city showing people how they can keep fires from ever starting. Mike is proud to tell the inspector that they've been studying about fires in school. Mike remembers these four rules. One, matches are dangerous. They should be used only with caution, seldom if ever by young children. Two, if you need to use a match, ask an adult for permission. Three, keep away from fires, in the house or out of doors. And four, report any fire you see where there shouldn't be one. The inspector is pleased to hear this. He tells Mike that he's counting on every child and adult to keep fires from starting. Then they'll all be city firefighters. When Mike and his father say goodbye to the inspector, it's time to hurry home. It's been a busy day, and Mr. Ryan just has time to put on his uniform and go to work at the fire station. Now that Mike has seen how firemen help people whose houses are on fire, how hard they work at the risk of their own lives, he's proud that his father is a fireman. And he's determined to prevent as many fires as he can, so his father and the other firemen will not need to risk their lives because of his carelessness. Just as Mr. Ryan leaves the house, whom do you think he meets? It's Mr. and Mrs. Howard and Betty, who live just a few blocks away. You can be sure they will never forget how grateful they are to Mr. Ryan and all the other brave firemen who saved Betty's life and kept their house from burning down. Yes, all of us should be very proud of our brave city firefighters. And all of us can be firefighters too, if we prevent fires.